Welcome back to another Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. Did you manage to practice joyful waiting? It was not easy for me at all, but let's keep working at it together. This week, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. We are going to learn all about L-O-V-E, love. Let us first light the fourth candle on the Advent wreath and begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. The Advent wreath reminds us that the light of Christ is coming into the world. As the light gets brighter every week, we wait with great hope for Jesus, the light that will pierce through the darkness at Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us first so that we are able to love others. As we prepare for the birth of your Son, Jesus, help us to bring the love of Christ to others. Holy Spirit, guide our thoughts, words, and actions every moment of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. children, come join us when we sing, I will love you, you echo the words and actions, I will love you. When we sing, I will serve you, you echo, I will serve you. Are you ready? Let's do this together. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. 
keep them coming. It's time for the Word of God. Do you have what you need with you? Now is the time to go and get them. You ready? Let's turn to John 3.16. If you have a highlighter with you, go ahead and highlight the Bible verse. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but may have eternal life. What is eternal life? Now, why does God need to send Jesus, His Son, to die for us? Well, to have eternal life means to live forever with God in heaven, in everlasting joy and happiness. Just think about the times you spend with the people you love, like your parents, doing what you love to do, like eating ice cream, how you wish it would last forever, right? So, to give us the hope of eternal life, God sent Jesus, His Son, to save us from our sins. Sin separates us from God, but Jesus is the way back to the Father. I wonder what it's like to share something so precious like your favourite toy with others. But when you do, you know you do it out of love and sacrifice. That's the love of the Father for us. Nothing can separate us from His love for us in Christ Jesus. Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, God is here by our side, walking with us and looking out for us. He loves the whole world so much that He wants the best for all of us. Not just in the now, but when we go to heaven. All we need to do is to believe in Him, love Him, and share His love with everyone. Emma, you've been watching this video for more than half an hour. You need an eye break. The video is about to end. Five more minutes. Five minutes later. Five minutes is up. Emma, would you like to spare some of your time? Sacrifice it and come and help me out here? Uh, hang on. Oh, it's an activity scene. I would love to help. Come, come and help me find the one last figure that will complete the scene. Uh, Jesus? Jesus? Mm, that's right. It is good to sacrifice our time to remember this special season of Advent, especially one that is filled with love. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done according to your word. Do you know who said these words? Yes, it is none other than our Blessed Mother. When Angel Gabriel approached our Blessed Mother and told her that she would bear a son, she felt puzzled and even troubled. She was not married and is a virgin. People might misunderstand her and talk badly about her. Despite her worries, Mary didn't run nor hide from God. Instead, she said yes to God in faith, love, and sacrifice. Mary's yes had made God's divine plan possible, and that is to have Jesus become man so that we might be saved. So you see, Emma, Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins. Sacrificing your screen time will lead you to have a more meaningful experience with our friends and family. 
He's got my vote as goat. Yeah, he is the goat. What does that mean? G O A T, greatest of all times. Since it's the last week of Advent, I think I should do something out of love for someone too, as the gift of love. Mm-hmm. Why don't we volunteer our time at the old folks' home this weekend to spread some Christmas cheer? I would love that. Hmm, that's a great idea. Twenty minutes later. Mom, I found baby Jesus. Yes, that's it. Thanks, John. We are all set for the arrival of baby Jesus now. Now, but we'll keep this till it's time to welcome him at Christmas. And what is it that you call him again? Greatest of all times. Ah, that's right, the goat. Like John and Emma, we can show our love to others in our own special way. We can share our things with our siblings help our mummies and daddies with housework, or just being there for a friend who feels lonely. But why should we show love to others? Well, in the Bible, 1 John 4.16 reminds us that God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. This means that if Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and God lives in us, then everything that we say or do must be done in love because God is love. Sometimes, loving others isn't easy. We may have to sacrifice our time or the things we love doing. But remember, God loves a cheerful giver. When you find it difficult to love, especially those who are unkind, Ask God for strength, for God is love. Now pray this with me. Jesus, I praise and thank you for loving me. Strengthen me with your love. Teach me to love you and others without expecting anything in return. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus, deep down in my heart. I love you, Jesus, deep down in my heart. Talk about deep, deep down, down, deep down in my heart. Blessed Mary Frances Xavier was born into a distinguished family in Germany. At the age of 16, she lost her mother and two older sisters to a highly contagious disease at that time. Despite the painful loss, Blessed Frances told her father she wanted to visit the poor and the sick to give them food and clothing. Francis' father was displeased and forbade Francis because he had lost his loved ones to disease. He feared for his only living daughter to catch the disease. Blessed Francis was torn between her need to obey her father and her desire to serve others. She finally found a way around by helping her parish priest start a soup kitchen nearby called St. John's Kitchen for the Poor. On those days, that Frances walked at the soup kitchen, she would quietly stop and visit the sick on the way home. Eventually, 
when Frances' father died, a family friend told her that God was calling her to serve him and asked her to listen to God to learn what to do. Blessed Frances then decided to lead a community life with her fellow Franciscans and started a new congregation called Sisters of the Poor of San Francis. They brought sick people into their home, opened soup kitchens, visited women in prison, and opened hospitals and homes for the needy. Frances's love for the poor did not stop in Germany and Europe. Her congregation reached out as far as the United States of America and set up many homes in many states. Blessed Mary Frances Xavier lived her life of love and service. She saw the face of God in every poor and sick person she cared for. Let us learn to give love like Blessed Francis and listen to God to know what to do. We are little saints in the making and we too can give hope and love to people around us. We hope you are having lots of fun building the Nativity Manger with your family and completing the challenges on joy. This week, we are going to create the different characters in the manger. For more information, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and don't forget to share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. We will be featuring your completed manger at the Feast of the Holy Family. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. Jesus' birthday is almost here. And at Mass on Christmas, you will notice a few differences. Father will no longer be in purple. He will wear white to show that the light has come into the world. You will hear glory to God in the highest again, just like how the shepherds heard it the night that Jesus was born. And in the middle of Mass, we'll do something special during the Creed. Do you remember that we say, Jesus by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man? At Christmas, we kneel for this line to show that we are so thankful for this awesome moment. Outside of Christmas, we bow every time we say this line of the Creed. It reminds us to treasure this amazing gift that God has given to us. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about sharing God's love with others. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the fourth Sunday of Advent, 19 December 2021. We offer up this Mass for those waiting for the coming of Christ, that we may turn to Him in all things. Join us in singing the processional hymn.
Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to the celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's getting closer and closer to Christmas. And so this Sunday, we come to celebrate the Sunday of love. And so later, we'll be lighting the fourth candle, the candle of love. And so let us begin this celebration as we bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, we light the fourth Advent candle for love to remind us that Christ is love. Let us pray. Stir up your might, we pray you, O Lord, and come rescue us through your great strength so that salvation which has been hindered by our sins may be hastened by the grace of your gentle mercy. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, our hearts desire the warmth of your love and our minds are searching for the light of your word. Increase our longing for Christ our Saviour and give us the strength to grow in love, that the dawn of his coming may find us rejoicing in his presence and welcome the light of his truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. And so my dear brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate the sacred mystery of God's love, we call to mind the times that we have failed to follow his command, the fair times we have failed to love, to love God, to love the people around us. Let us ask God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Micah. The Lord says this, But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, the least of the clans of Judah, out of you will be born for me, the one who is to rule over Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past, to the days of old. The Lord is therefore going to abandon them till the time when she who is to give birth gives birth. Then the remnant of his brothers will come back to the sons of Israel. He will stand and feed his flock with the power of the Lord, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure, for from them on 
He will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Hebrews. This is what Christ said on coming into the world. You who wanted no sacrifice or oblation prepared a body for me. You took no pleasure in holocaust or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded in the scroll of the book, God, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, You did not want what the law lays down as the things to be offered, that is, the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocaust, and sacrifices for sin. And you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, Here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is abolishing the first sort, to replace it with the second. And this will was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body, made once and for all by Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect on today's readings, the first thing which struck me was the word of you. Or oh, we see this in the first reading, where out of you, will be born for me, the one to rule over Israel. Here the Lord, through the prophet Micah, was telling Bethlehem, Ephrathah, this little, little town, a little tribe of the tribe of Judah, the least of the clans, but out of this least will be born Jesus, will be born the Saviour. And so we see that God was choosing one of the least. And we see also in the gospel, when Elizabeth greets Mary, she says, of all women, you are the most blessed. Again, Mary, just a simple woman, yet of all the women, God chose her to be the mother of God, to be the one to carry Jesus and bring him into the world. And so when we look at this being chosen, and we look at how Mary, how Bethlehem is so special, and we wonder only the few are chosen. But the fact is, God wants to choose more than just one or two. God, in fact, chooses all of us. The question would then be, will we choose to respond? You know, I, I grew up with this idea of being chosen or choosing. You know, to be chosen Normally, only a few are chosen. So we look at priests, right? Only a few people are chosen to be priests. Or even when you think about it, at a, at a lucky draw, right? We hope to be chosen so that we can win a prize because a prize is only special if, ev if only some people get it, right? If everybody gets it, then it's not really a prize. It just becomes a doll gift, uh, a welcome present but we want to be special. But do we believe that we are special? Do we believe in the promise of God? So not just about being chosen. Here, today's reading tells us, chosen to receive the promise. When Elizabeth says, of all women, you are the most blessed. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Right? That Mary is blessed because she was chosen out of all women. But this word blessed comes again. She says, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And so, it is not just about what well, God choose and then Mary is blessed. But Mary is blessed because she also chose to believe. To believe in the promise, God's promise to her. 
that God's promise would be fulfilled for her as well as through her. And I guess this is where, for us, do we really want to be chosen by God? Because to be chosen by God has two parts. One part is the promise, one part is the blessing, but the other part is the response. The other part is whether we choose to believe that promise and to live according to that promise. And that's why in the second reading, we see how Jesus, in the letter to the Hebrews, right, what was being told about Jesus is that He came. He came to do God's will. Here, that God does not want sacrifices. He doesn't want oblation, holocaust. It's not that we need to give things to God just to please God. But what is most pleasing to God is that we believe in His promise, but that we also live according to His will. And that's why Jesus says, Here am I, I am coming to obey your will. Christ came to obey the will of the Father, just as Mary obeyed the will of God. Right, we hear the passage where she says, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, that what you have said be done to me. When the angel told her of God's promise, she was willing to follow and to do whatever resulted. So I guess for us, the question would be, do I want to be chosen? Do I believe that I'm chosen? And what am I being chosen for? Many of us sometimes struggle to think, but I'm nothing special, right? Maybe I'm not so good in my studies. Maybe right, I'm not so talented as I compare myself to other people. But that's the thing. Over and over again in the scriptures, God doesn't just choose the best. In fact, God makes the best. He made all of us good, but good in His eyes, not good according to when we compare ourselves to others. God is inviting us to allow Him to mold us to what He wants us to be. It is not just about getting A's. If God has given you a good brain, then make use of it, right? Study hard, get your grades. But that's not what it is all about. We are all called to live our life to the full, to what God has given to us, not just for myself, not just so that I can be proud, I can be better than others, but that I come to do His will. That I come and my life is man in service. My life, right, in today's the fourth Sunday of Advent, the candle that we lit, the candle of love, reminds us that there is what God is, that is who we are made in the image and likeness. We were called to be made for love. And this, if you want to strive to be the best at anything, then strive to be the best at loving. Mary, right, she believed, she obeyed, she believed the promise, but what did she do? She didn't just stay at home and say, okay, I'm going to have Jesus, I better look after him, I better, you know, protect him and uh, don't go out so much. But for us, we see that Mary went to Elizabeth. She knew that Elizabeth needed help in her old age, she was expecting John the Baptist and Mary selflessly went to go and look after her. In doing that, what did she do? She brought Christ to Elizabeth. And that was what Elizabeth experienced. That's what John the Baptist in her womb felt and experienced and jumped for joy. The question for us then we need to ask is, are we bringing love are we bringing joy? 
Are we bringing blessings to others? Are we being a blessing to others? Or are we, right, making life difficult for others? Our parents, the people around us, do we want to be living according to God's choice, be living according to what we believe, be living according to the promise that God has given to us. And so really, at the end of the day, if I am chosen, I'm chosen to be a blessing. I'm chosen to bring love, to bring joy, right? The four candles, love, joy, peace, and hope. Do I bring that to others? And the season of Advent is about preparing our hearts so that Christ can be born in us. He's choosing to be born in us so that we can bring him to others. Let us pray that we allow him, that we choose him, we believe in him, that we do his will so that we experience God's blessing and that we bring God's blessing to others. We pray for this as we celebrate this Eucharist. Amen. And so because God has chosen us, God is inviting us to believe in His promise, to believe in His way, let us respond by professing what we believe, by professing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this fourth and final week of Advent, our final days of preparation before Christmas, we ask God to forgive us our sins and through His grace to create us anew to welcome the Christ child into our hearts and our lives. With watchful hope and faith, we bring our needs to our Lord, believing in the peace He offers us in every season and that nothing is impossible with Him. For our religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Go, all priests and church leaders throughout the world. That they be kept in perfect peace as they keep their eyes on you, calming the wind and the seas in these uncertain times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that Christ, our Prince of Peace, may grant them the wisdom to make just decisions that lead to peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the earth, particularly people at war, that they may receive the peace that our Christ promises us and strive to walk the path of reconciliation and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the church that we might follow Mary's example of faith as we serve and be his instruments of love for our families and all that we serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will reign in every household with love, forgiveness, and mercy flowing for those who are feeling alone or isolated in this time, that they may find support, love, and friendship in this season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, homeless, hungry, or unemployed, that the Prince of Peace be near to them, bless them with hope, and grant them strength and courage, and may your presence be felt. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, baptized into your eternal inheritance, that you speak their entrance into everlasting communion with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, those who have no one to pray for them, and those who do not know how to pray, let us lift up our intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, as you found favour in the Virgin Mary, help us to be holy and live so that you may find favour in our lives. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, and help us to remember that all our gifts come from you. May your Spirit open our hearts for us to receive him, and in your mercy, help us to live devoutly and temperately in this life as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as He filled with His power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the source of our love. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow your head for the blessing. And after each invocation, we respond, Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may He make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we are members of a church that has lasted for over 2,000 years because of the zeal, conviction and love that many holy men and women had for Christ and His Church. Here in Singapore, since Saint Laurent Amber came 200 years ago, many religious, lay missionaries and priests have followed and laid down their lives in the hope of building up the church so that all of us know of the salvation that our Lord has brought us. We have benefited much from the toil and sacrifice, from the setting up of schools, hospitals, hospices and homeless shelters to tending to the spiritual needs of the faithful in Singapore. It is now our duty to build on their efforts 
and ensure that future generations will always have the light of faith to guide them. Each of us has been given gifts of time, talents and treasures, not to be used for ourselves, but to be used for this mission. To develop our young men and women through a holistic education. To inspire leaders who will in turn inspire others. To nurture our children into faithful disciples of Jesus. To form and strengthen the faith of Catholics to be better witnesses of the Lord. To echo our faith to those who are searching for Him. To inspire believers to live our faith courageously and lovingly and to raise up generations of young people for Christ. To support our clergy who have dedicated their lives to minister to us. To contribute to digitization efforts to grow our faith community. To build and maintain places for us to worship in and be molded in his likeness, including the future Catholic Hub. Just like these saints who in their own ways touched the lives of the faithful here in Singapore, we too have the capacity to be conduits of God's grace and to meet the needs of our church. Let us support the work of the Archdiocese to ensure that the light of the Gospel may continue to reach the hearts of many, to widen and deepen her reach of evangelization so that we can be a more vibrant, evangelizing, and missionary church. Guided by the light that we have received in baptism, let us be grateful for the gift of our faith these 200 years. Continue to ignite and shine with faith, and as one body of Christ, build the church today for tomorrow.